Okay, so this video is part two of our introduction to the anesthetic record, and this is going to be dealing with the actual anesthetic record itself. The first video was the front side of the sheet, which was the pre-anesthetic consult, and now we're on the back side of the sheet, so the actual anesthetic record. So this is the form that you fill out during the actual operation itself, and it deals with all of the things that you monitor during the operation, and then the transfer to recovery after the operation. It's important to understand the concept that this record will become part of the patient's permanent record and therefore it has the potential to be used down the line if the patient's having future operations to guide anesthetic decisions in that case and the consequences of future litigation if something were to go wrong. So it's important to fill out this form both accurately and legibly so that in the future you can look back on it uh, and deduce what happened during this operation. In terms of the actual form itself, from the medical student's perspective, we want you to get a sense of this form and, and what we're monitoring. But in, in terms of flawlessly marking it and putting things on it and filling it out, it's not that important at your stage. But it's really important just to kind of get a sense of the things that we do look at and things, you know, to, to be able to look at one of these and tell an operation that kind of went really smoothly and an operation where a patient was kind of all over the chart so to speak. Um, so the stuff up at the top is pretty explanatory. You filled this out on the other side, name, date, what they're having done, who's in the room, who's doing the surgery. And this is kind of more specific stuff uh, about kind of what's going on towards the start of the operation. So the machine that that's being used. Most of the operating rooms at Vancouver General Hospital use a Fabius GS. Uh, how we induce anesthesia, IV, is most common if it's general. If there's any kind of regional done, you kind of want to detail that here. Uh, this is about the intubation itself. So what size endotracheal tube did you use? Did you Were you able to bag, mask, ventilate the patient? What did their airway look like, similar to what was on the front side of the sheet? Did you need to use any of these techniques to kind of help, to help you intubate the, the patient? How are they being ventilated? Is it spontaneous ventilation if the patient's just sedated or are you controlling it? Um, what have you done with their eyes? Uh, this is important in case they do get a corneal abrasion. You want to be able to look back and you know, know that you actually, yeah, you did tape their eyes to protect them from that. Uh, what position the patient's in, if they're padded or not. Are you having to warm the patient with a, a warm blanket on their upper or lower body? Uh, are you using warm fluid in order to keep them warm? Then we move over to kind of to the monitors that you've, you've put on the patient. What parameters are going to be monitored during the operation today? So pulse oximeter, 5-lead ECG, uh, capnography, spirometry, temperature. Do they have a Foley catheter in? Do they have an arterial line? Do they have a central line? Are you monitoring their intracranial pressure at the same time? So, you know, you can you tick off which ones these patients have, uh, and that serves as a record of that. Um, now we move into kind of tracking things throughout the operation. Uh, so this is kind of a column for all your drugs and it's, it's defined by the time along the x-axis at the bottom here. So for example in this one 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock um, and each of these little bars represents five minutes of time. And so an hour is a full block here and you've got a little block for half an hour there and you track what time you give each drug and how much. So, you know, for example, if this patient were induced at 10 o'clock, uh, they were given a one milligram of midazolam for, to, to take the edge off just prior to that, and then they were given 50 micrograms of fentanyl as the induction took place, and whatever amount of propofol they were given at the same time for induction. And then, let's say, about halfway through the operation, let's say an hour in, they started moving a bit, so you gave them a bit more propofol because you felt like they were coming out of their anesthetic a little bit, so you gave them another dose of propofol. You'd mark that here and the amount that, that you gave. And we're tracking blood pressure and heart rate, so this is our vital sign track. And so systolic blood pressure is marked by a downwards arrow every five minutes um, at whatever value it is, and diastolic blood pressure is marked by an upwards arrow at whatever value it is, and heart rate's marked by a, a dot at whatever value it is. And so you track this throughout. Don't, don't be concerned with making sure you, you check every five minutes. 
the machine itself, the Fabius, our friend Fabius GS here, will actually tabulate every five minutes the values for blood pressure and for heart rate and for pulse oximetry, uh, which you would track up here. And so, you know, once once you get the operation underway, you can take a second once everything's running smoothly to to jot down your your notes. Um, and that's usually the practice that's that's done in, in the operating room. Everything gets started, and then you, you pull up the table on the anesthetic machine and tabulate everything as you go. And then once everything's settled, you have a bit more time. And on the bottom of this area here is how we actually track the maintenance of the anesthesia. So most, most operations will use desflurane to maintain the anesthesia, desflurane vapor, which comes in through the circuit. And you want to track the expiratory concentration. Uh, and so usually it's kind of between four and six percent, let's say. And so most anesthesiologists kind of draw a little trend here and then trend it throughout the operation. Um, and so if it comes down a little bit, you draw it down. If it goes up a little bit, you draw it up. And just so everyone kind of ha has an idea as to what level of anesthesia uh, the patient was under throughout the operation. And then here you can monitor your IVs. So uh, let's say we're giving them saline through their 18, the 18 gauge IV the patient has in their right arm, which we've also marked up here under circulation. So let's say this patient had a 20 gauge in their left hand and an 18 gauge in their right arm. We're giving them saline through their 18 gauge in their right arm. Um, and we put our first bag in, bag up around 10 o'clock and we'll track that throughout. If we put a second bag up, once this one is finished, we'll write that down at the same time. So now everyone knows how much fluid they're getting throughout the operation. Uh, the last part of the form here just deals with transfer to post anesthetic recovery. Um, so you can kind of tick off whichever one refers to this particular patient and make sure to get their vital signs. So the recovery nurses will automatically start to, to give you these as soon as you wheel the patient into the room. Uh, just make sure you note them down here. And then finally, you can just make any general comments about the procedure in this box here. Uh, so for example, if this patient was particularly difficult to intubate, you might make a comment about that here and what you used to, to make sure that you were able to secure the, the airway. But yeah, for the most part, that's the uh, anesthetic record and a brief introduction to it. Thank you for listening.